Okay, this is a video to demonstrate how the uh, voting system, particularly how Voting 2013 works within PowerPoint. So, using a computer where it's already installed, and we make a blank presentation. Wait for a second for that to load up. Now, once the PowerPoint actually loads, we should at the top see we've got a new addition onto the uh, taskbar, which is Vote 2013. So, I'm going to click on that, and you'll notice it's in Chinese. If you're not a Chinese speaker, if you click on the cog, click on the second tab along, click on the drop down, choose to select English and press OK, and it will now work in English. Now, if you want to make a simple slide like uh, testing voting pod, OK, it's nice and everything is the same as it is in a normal PowerPoint. Where we start to need to change is where we want to start to use the voting pod. So we're going to, instead of selecting insert from here, we're going to select insert from here. I'm going to insert a registration slide as the first one. And what this does is it lets me check that all the devices are connected. And I'm just going to do it by pressing a key. Nothing particularly clever I need to do here or change, so I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm going to insert a second slide. Now this one I'm going to use as a grouping one. And you'll see when I select it, it comes with a random selection of groups. Now, if I want to add more in, I can just press enter and add a new group. And that could become team six. Or I can delete them and the number will go down. In this case, I'm going to say click on the number which represents your house. Because I want to link it to the houses. And then I can go through. So team one becomes Team 2 becomes Hopeton, Team 3 becomes Line Dock, Team 4 becomes Stanley, and Team 5 becomes Wells. Because we don't need the Team 6, we can just delete the Team 6 and that will disappear and you see the numbers are the same again. If I want the chart to appear in different positions, I can do it. And I can also set when the chart appears. Now, that will uh, link to how many devices you've got connected. It's often easier to do it manually, but we could have it appear at closing or at opening. OK, I'm going to select this one up to appear at opening. And I'm going to select this one to appear at opening. But on many of the others, I won't want that to be the case. I'm now going to add my first question slide. So this could be a single choice one. I'm going to give three options. And again, if I want to change that, it's no problem. I click after number three and press down and it'll add a fourth option in. So for this one, I could click on it's a very simple question. Um, which of these are used in Python? So option one, you could say for i in range for a loop for Python. The second one could be um, loop. And the third one could be repeat. OK. Because the first one's the correct answer, I now want to click on the number one here to select it's the right answer. And if it's right, I want the person to get one mark. So score by right answer, we get one mark. Now, if I wanted them to lose a mark for the incorrect answer, I could also put a minus mark on there. At the moment, this voter is recording who it is, so we can track them later. Particularly important here because I'm trying to link them to a group. If I wanted it to be anonymous, if I just wanted to get some feedback on someone, I could select anonymous there. And I can choose a range of different options here. Now, once this is complete, then I can actually set the slideshow going. So I'm going to select on slideshow. I can obviously add a whole load more of these in. And I'm going to go from beginning. First page on here is just like anything else on uh, PowerPoint, no special controls. But as soon as we go across to one where we've got the um, voting options, then you'll see that the voting toolbar appears at the bottom. Now you can see the base station's connected. I can turn the graph on and off. I need to start the feedback each time before I get a response that stops the children getting ahead of themselves and stop it before I move on. And that also lets you re-vote. Um, Response details you're probably not going to use, nor show correct answer at this point, although you can set it up to do that. So in this first one, I'm going to press switch on the responses. I'm going to press on a couple of pads to make sure they're connected. And what we should see is that we get three pads now connected. Once I've finished, I press stop. 
I right click, go on to the next one. Now, click on the number which represents your house. And I'm going to link the pads. I'm going to connect two of these to Cumbermere and one of these to Hopeton. So again, I'm going to click on the switch the response on, start the feedback, and press on one, OK, one, OK, two, OK. So now when I respond, two of these are voting as Cumbermere, one of these are voting as Hopeton. Okay, I'm going to stop the response. And we go to the next slide. Now on this one, if I'm looking at the actual answer, I probably want the graph to be off. So I'm going to switch the graph to be off. I'm going to switch the response on. And I'm going to choose one. Okay. Switch the graph off. Two. Okay. Two. Okay. Once I've finished, I can stop it. I can switch the graph back on if I want, see if they've responded, or I can leave the graph off. When I've completed all of these, and I've only set up one page to vote on at the moment, I can press Escape to exit the presentation. Okay, once the presentation's finished and you've exited, you go back to the main screen, go to Vote 2013, and now if you go to the Data Analysis section, you can go into the Team Leaderboard, and you should now be able to see that, uh, from this case, Cumbermere has been given nine points, Stanley's been given seven, and you can see which questions the points were given on. You can also extract this as an Excel report. So I just click on that and write test. Okay. That should bring up a document that we can then have a look at. If I just click on the document here, wait for it to load, you should see I've now got the ranking, the team names, the score and the speed in which they were done, if that's a useful piece of information to us. Going back into PowerPoint, we can still see the team leaderboard, so I can look at that if I want. Okay, I can close that. I can also go back into the data analysis and I can look at things like the score ranking, so it will bring up the positions of that, if that's something that I've uh, used within it. I can look at the participant leaderboard, so I can see that um, ranking position was keypad 65 and it scored three. I can also go on to the results and look at the results by participant. So you can see uh, on slide three, please sign in, keypad 10 had one response, the voting time. So we can pull quite a lot of data off this if we want to. Once we're finished with this, we can just save this. Because it's captured it in the PowerPoint, not in an overlay, all the information that we've asked as we've gone through has been included on here. Now, on my graphs at the moment, you can see it's very small. And the reason for that is because I set the original voter number at 450. So it's only seeing 21 responses from 450. If I wanted to change that, I can change that one within the hardware setup by going to keypad number. So I've got 450. If I knew I was doing this with a class of 20, I could drop that down to 20. Um, and then the responses will fill the page in a, a more pleasing type of way. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you find this useful.